What is up everyone and welcome to another episode of We Sibs West Coast East Coast Siblings. Now a lot of you may not know but I'm actually a huge football fan. I've kind of been waiting on doing some more football related videos. I wanted to wait until the season started but now that the preseason is full into swing and my favorite team the Eagles they've already had so many newsworthy um, stories happening. I figured I would go ahead and get right to it. Now this particular video is actually going to be my reaction to an ESPN video. It's actually a small segment from First Take. Stephen A. Smith is apparently putting to bed this idea of Carson Wentz versus Nick Foles. So I'm going to be live reacting to the video and commenting as we watch. Now the video is entitled Stephen A. Smith shuts down the Carson Wentz versus Nick Foles debate. And I feel like automatically from this title, they're trying to stir up some emotion. ESPN knows very well that a whole lot of people are still at odds about how the whole Carson and Foles thing kind of shook out. So this video is presented as something that shuts down that entire argument. So let's check it out. Yes, he got them a playoff victory over Chicago before they lost to New Orleans. I got all of that. But the reality is, is that unless you're saying that Carson Wentz, healthy, could not have done what Nick Foles did, I don't want to hear anything well, from anybody else. Okay, so let's stop right there. Basically, Stephen A is presenting the idea that if you think that Carson Wentz could have done everything that Nick Foles has done in the last two years, then there's no more discussion to be made. Now, there's a problem with that straight off the bat, as just because a player can do something doesn't mean that he necessarily would have done that thing. Nick Foles had actually already been in a playoff game before the Super Bowl run two years ago. Carson Wentz, still as of 2019, has not played in a playoff game. Now, does that make a huge difference? Probably not a significant one, but it does make a difference, and that is that the playoffs oftentimes are seen as a whole nother monster. There's so much riding on it. There's so much tension. There's so much emotion going into every single play of every single playoff game that you can't just assume that Carson Wentz would go into it like a veteran. There certainly are extremely athletic quarterbacks all around the NFL who could have done exactly what Nick did two years ago. But that doesn't mean automatically that they would have done those things. So let's continue. Carson Wentz is a better talent than Nick Foles. I agree Carson with that, Stephen Wentz, a. All right, I know you do. That's my point. So if you agree with it, understand that, again, monetary issues is why Nick Foles is gone. Ultimately, you also okay. had to make the choice. If Car Now, that's a fair point. So monetary issues obviously go into it. They couldn't afford to keep both Carson Wentz and Nick Foles on the roster. Understandably, both of them would soon be asking for a lot more money. Nick Foles coming off a Super Bowl and then even a playoff run. And Carson Wentz obviously was such a high ceiling, he would be demanding that big quarterback money very soon. So they couldn't afford to keep both of them on. That's understood. I will even agree with Stephen A's point that Carson Wentz is a better talent athletically than Nick Foles. Nick Foles is a little bit taller, but Carson Wentz has got it all. He's got the height, he's got the strength, he's got the speed. He's got all of those traits that make a quarterback just everything that you want. And that's why the Eagles, as many people have said, have moved heaven and earth in order to land this quarterback, Carson Wentz. Unless you're going to say that Carson Wentz was better than Nick Foles, which no, nobody will do, which no one will do, the bottom line is the Eagles... Okay, right there he meant to say, unless you're going to say Nick Foles is better than Carson Wentz, not the other way around. So that was a mistake. But I understand that not many people are going to say that Nick Foles is a better quarterback than Carson Wentz. The one thing I will say is that Nick Foles is undoubtedly a more experienced quarterback than Carson Wentz. I think that's fair. Made the right decisions. I don't think they should have any regrets. I don't think they will as you long as Carson Wentz can be healthy. You don't have to say that. First of all, let me go with both of your points. Um, That's a valid point as well. Carson Wentz having issues staying healthy. Your best ability is your availability, often is the case in the NFL. So again, I agree with Stephen putting that little side note on all the upside that Carson has if he can stay healthy. Number one, I understand what they did, Dan. The reality is maybe they had to do it that way and enabled them to improve in other this ways. But closed. when you make a decision in life that you're, that, it's, that's, that like there are options on both sides that make sense, there are pros and cons. It's not like once you make that decision, even though you want to go ahead with a full heart and be committed, 
it's not like you're not still conflicted about things. Like the bottom line, like those things still exist, the pros on keeping Nick Foles. One of them is it's tough to say, well, sure, Carson Wentz will be available at the end of the season when he hasn't been the last two seasons. Again, that's more of a fair criticism. Being healthy is the most important ability that a quarterback can have because it doesn't matter if you have all the talent in the world if you can't step on the field for more than two, three, four, five games before you're out. Now, another point he just made is that obviously Nick Foles is going to be in the back of every Eagles fan's mind for at least just this season. He just came off of a Super Bowl run and then a, a playoff run. There's no way that fans won't be kind of peeking over at Jacksonville to see what's going on with Nick Foles and the Jaguars from time to time. And while the Eagles believe in Carson and have full-heartedly committed to him being the quarterback of the future, it's only human nature that you're going to look at the guy who just won the Super Bowl for you. Mind you, your first Super Bowl ever. It's obvious that you would keep an eye on a player like that. Now, th that's one. Two, Stephen A., when you bring up Carson Wentz a better talent than Nick Foles. Yes, he is. Carson Wentz is an elite talent, no doubt about it. Although Nick Foles, the first time he had a real coach in the NFL or a system, went 27 touchdowns, two interceptions. And then when he got back to that team, won a Super Bowl, and then made a playoff run. Never and that's a very interesting point because, you see, while Carson is obviously a more attractive option as a quarterback, like I said, having all the traits that I mentioned before, Nick Foles has shown that he can get it done in the right system as well. If you look at two quarterbacks, kind of like a Tom Brady and a, and a Cam Newton, right? Two quarterbacks with different body types, and they do things very differently, but they can both achieve, obviously, greatness. You have to start asking yourselves, are the Eagles trying to just win, or are they trying to win in style? Are they trying to win a certain way? I've been an Eagles fan as long as I can remember, and that seemed like just the thing we could never get to. And I'll be honest, oftentimes it seems like, yeah, we won the Super Bowl, but we didn't win it with the guy we wanted to win it with, the way we wanted to win it. So we'll send you off and we'll try and do it again. Less Carson Wentz is a greater talent, but when you say if Car Carson Wentz would have done the same thing, no, we don't know that. There it is. There it is. And that's it. That was exactly my point earlier in the video. Just because someone can do something doesn't mean they would have done that thing. We don't know if Carson Wentz could elevate under pressure in those moments. Not that he can't. We just don't know because we haven't seen him do it yet. I want to remind you quick, Dan, then I'll let you go. That... Yeah, let me just stop it there. We've seen Nick time and time again in the most clutch of situations in the playoffs, in the Super Bowl, where it really is do or die. He's just had ice in his veins every time. Obviously, someone of Carson Wentz's ability is more than capable of doing that exact same thing. But once again, we have not seen it in the playoffs or the Super Bowl yet. So in this league, nothing is promised. But I know you disagree with this, Stephen A., is Belichick was daring Cars uh, Nick Foles to beat him with his, with his arm. They didn't want to run. They wanted to dare. And Nick Foles did. Nick Foles, with all the chips on the line in right. the Super Bowl, right. did the thing Belichick was daring him to do. Sure. I don't know that Carson Wentz could have. Maybe he can, maybe he can't, but he hasn't done it yet. It's literally one of the most outrageous things I've ever heard in my life. But the... the... Okay, uh, honestly, I don't see what's so outrageous about that. Once again, he's saying that Carson Wentz could have done those things but are we really trying to say that we know the future with exact certainty that this team would win the super bowl how many nfl predictions are wrong pretty much every year because only one team comes out the winner and everyone else ends up wrong is it that crazy to say that although we don't know how it could have happened we know how it did happen and here he is saying that's the most outrageous thing he's ever heard how is that outrageous? That seems like a perfectly logical, reasonable, fair statement. The reality also is this, Max. Nick Foles had a great run in that Super Bowl run last year and a really nice run Two at the end ago. of last season. I love Nick Foles. But the contrary is this, that the Eagles as an organization have such a good head coach and so much talent around them that maybe some other backup quarterbacks could have had somewhat of a similar And what does that, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut him off because what does that mean?
Just because someone could have done something doesn't mean they would have done that thing. We can't keep writing these things in stone as if they would have absolutely happened when they didn't happen. You could take somebody with the talent of Aaron Rodgers or Cam Newton and say, oh yeah, they would have won the Super Bowl every single year. They certainly have the talent to do it, but guess what? Neither of them have in recent years. Obviously, Cam has the injury. Aaron Rodgers just dealt with an injury. So this dogmatic approach, any other quarterback would have done the same thing that Nick Foles did, I think is kind of a cheap shot. And you notice he prefaces it by saying, I love Nick Foles. It's not about love or hate. Obviously, Philly's going to love Nick for forever. He's got a statue. He won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Besides that, we're just talking about the body of work. We're talking about the productivity of these two quarterbacks. It seems completely unfair to any quarterback to just say, oh yeah, um, anybody could have done what you just did. Well, why hasn't every quarterback won a Super Bowl? But mm. because of the coaching and this, the play calling style and the ability to run the football and the dominant offensive line and the weapon on the outside, is Nick what, what, Foles what, what, the what, what, only guy that could have done that? Because maybe Dan, 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 Dan. I can't believe they titled this video the way that they did. It's not saying that no one else could have done it. It's that no one did it. There were quarterbacks who were better than Nick and not as good as Nick who played last year, who had decent teams, who didn't do the same thing. Period. Better and worse. Better quarterbacks did not win the Super Bowl. So it's not just looking at a quarterback's talent and saying, talent, therefore you will, you will win the Super Bowl. You would have won the Super Bowl. It's the NFL. Everybody's talented. There are certain talents that just shine amongst them all. And obviously Carson is one of those. But to say somehow that talent is a guarantee for success, let alone a Super Bowl, that just blows my mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Max, hold on Max. Hold on, Max. Dan, let me, let me help you out here, Dan. Because actually, even though you're making the right point, your argument is not as strong as it could be against Max Kellerman. Here's where you get Max Kellerman. We haven't seen Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns do a lot of things yet. That's heard true. you raving about them. Heard That's you raving true. about them. Mm. Of course, excuse me, the fact of the matter is we've seen Carson Wentz perform. We didn't see sure. him perform under the level, uh, under the situation that Nick Foles performed right. under because he was hurt. But we've seen him in enough situations on a football field in the National Football League to recognize his talent. So Steven is making a comparison here between Baker Mayfield and Carson Wentz, saying that everybody raves and rants about Baker Mayfield and the new Cleveland Browns, but they don't want to do the same thing for Carson Wentz. Maybe Max was praising Baker Mayfield for his achievements last season. I'm not doing that. Any quarterback who doesn't play in a playoff game and do very well and show that they are competent quarterbacks in the playoffs, I'm not giving them really any kind of credit. We've seen so many talented quarterbacks come into the league, do A, B, and C, and maybe injuries hold them out, or maybe the defenses learn what they're doing and they completely shut them down. So until you show that you're an actual threat in the playoffs, I don't give any of these quarterbacks legit street cred. So if Max is saying he's praising Baker Mayfield, then yeah, you got to give the same love to Carson Wentz because he has had amazing seasons. Where I'm coming from, I'm not giving too much respect to either of them because neither of them have been in the playoffs in those ice do or die situations. And we know last year, it was toward the end, every single game, it was like do or die. If we don't win this game, we're not going to the playoffs. And we know how that season ended. But yeah, that's totally unfair. If you're going to give praise and credit to Baker Mayfield, it it's only makes sense that you would praise Carson Wentz for doing pretty much the same thing and better. And what he brings to the table. You're sitting there saying because he wasn't in an ideal situation that Nick Foles was in, okay, that we don't know yet. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Now, this is where Stephen A is totally going off. If I'm understanding him correctly, he's saying that Nick Foles was in an ideal situation. Okay, no, that's just not accurate. By almost no stretch of the imagination were the Eagles in an ideal situation, especially not last year where they made it into the playoffs by the skin of their teeth 
And then we're playing road game after road game, playing the Chicago Bears and winning by the skin of their teeth, and then obviously losing to the Saints. Now the Super Bowl run, yeah, their team was dope. Their defense was like top four, top three in the league. Carson Wentz was killing it, the receivers were killing it, and Nick Foles was able to step in. So as far as the team goes, yeah, Nick was in an ideal situation. But then not too many things changed the year after, and obviously that ideal situation of the team didn't help Carson propelled the Eagles into the playoffs, and many times it looked like we weren't even going to make the playoffs. So I wouldn't say that just having talent on your team and having an ideal team necessarily means that Nick was in an ideal situation. But you know it about a bunch of other guys in the league you haven't seen in those situations, no, Mac, no, and you don't no. have no problem talking about them. That's fair. No, that's, a, that's entirely wrong. I suspect that's, not that's entirely wrong. Baker. Baker gives me the impression that he's going to be that what, kind what of the, guy. What, what does the word impression mean? What's that however, definition of impression? Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, so Stephen A. is completely right here. You can't count your impression as some sort of validity test for how good a quarterback is going to be. We've seen quarterbacks come in with all the talent and skills in the world and not win a single Super Bowl. And then you see people like Tom Brady who just come in the league okay after Bledsoe, and then obviously he's the GOAT. So yeah, Stephen A. is completely right there. You can't be biased like that just counting on your impression of a player to somehow justify how good you think they are. You, you, get, you, can, you can get a feeling about a guy, but the point is this. Oh, if the Browns just let a We have a feeling up, about Carson Wentz. If the Browns just I let a backup a go who done it under pressure and someone said, hey, should they be conflicted what about that? Molly. I'd say, yeah, that guy did it already. Max makes a good point there. Obviously, and we talked about it earlier, if you let go of a Super Bowl quarterback, especially one who's just 30, you're going to kind of be looking to, you know, keep an eye on him, say, hey, did we make the right decision? Sure, the Eagles made a confident decision. They believe in Carson Wentz, but only time will tell if it was the right decision. Obviously, several more years will show um, by the amount of playoffs, championships, Super Bowls even, um, if that decision was right. And that's something we just won't know. Particularly if Baker wasn't there at the end of the last two seasons, as Carson Wentz wasn't. Yeah, that's what's in my head Max, too, Stephen A. Yeah. But Max, I mean, not that question, you guys aren't entertaining me. But Max, the question is this. In, are, are the Eagles at the end of the year going to go, we, we won the Super Bowl or we made it to the dance because of Carson? Or you know what? We kept our insurance policy, Nick Foles. He, he, he didn't have to play, but at least we kept him. I'm hoping for the Eagles' sake, and I hate that. Yeah, once again, that's a, that's a financial thing. The idea of keeping both Nick Foles and Carson Wentz was really a pipe dream. That wasn't going to happen as both of them were set to ask for a lot of money. Also, I'm actually rooting against them. But if I were an Eagles fan, I would hope for their sake that Carson Wentz is healthy at the end and of the year. And they're Super Bowl he contenders. Not, he, right, but he is, and I think they will be if he's healthy at the end of the year. But given the last two seasons... Boy, it doesn't Good look like the odds Nick are in his favor. All the these, end. all the insurance agents watching the show are gonna hit you up because they know you How just live that? in fear, man. Well, the yeah. e okay. So Matt just made a really whack point about living in fear. That, that I, I don't even want to really respond to that. But obviously, every team lives in fear. You don't want to lose your quarterback. And if you see a trend starting to develop with a quarterback who can't necessarily stay healthy, look at RG three. Right. Um, eventually, it's it's time to move on. No one is above that. I don't care if they are the the next Tom Brady. Carson Wentz, like any human being, can get injured. And if this becomes a pattern, then it doesn't matter how good his ceiling is or how good he could be. If he can't stay healthy, the Eagles need to cut him loose, like any team would with any quarterback. Period. If you keep getting in car accidents, guess what? Your premiums go up. He's got the impression about Baker Mayfield and us, but not okay, the impression about results. Carson. Yeah, so there Stephen A is really drilling down on a, a solid point. You can't rely on your impression or your feeling of a player. My test, and I say this as somebody who has played football, who has played in playoff games and championships, let them play a playoff game, see how they handle that pressure. See how they handle the world watching. See how they handle win or go home, do or die situations. Last 60 seconds in the fourth quarter, you got to go down and drive 80 yards for a touchdown. Let's see how they handle those situations before we start to say, oh, this person is the next this or that. And that goes for Baker just as well as Carson.
And the only reason we don't have to say that for Nick Foles is because he's been to the playoffs three times already, so we know how he's going to perform in those moments. Here, 61% of fans say yes, Eagles should have doubts about letting St. How many, Nick please? walk. How many, 61. Wow, and see, even ESPN's own poll is backing it up that the majority of fans are saying, yeah, if you just let go of your Super Bowl MVP quarterback who was driving deep into the playoffs just last year, it's only natural to have doubts. That's not a bad thing. That's not wrong. We don't have to feel like we're betraying Carson Wentz or betraying the Eagles to say, this guy won, won a Super Bowl. Obviously, there's nothing we can do about it now as he's an $80 million man in Jacksonville and he's likely never going to come back to the Eagles. But yeah, it's only natural to be watching him this season. And I'm filming the outro on a different day. But anyway, that's all for this video. If you guys agree or if you liked it, go ahead and leave a like. Make sure you comment, subscribe, and click that bell so you can know when we're dropping more videos like this one. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.